I'm Ali. <laughs> Here's how we speak to our second child as a couple that speaks five languages. <laughs> okay, Amaya's speech is great, but we did make a bit of a mistake. Yeah, we thought, oh, if we're both speaking to an Israeli in English, it'll work out. The reality is she's had like an 80-20 input of English to Swahili, so of course her English is a lot better. So this time we've got a system. We're using the one parent, one language method, meaning I speak to him in Swahili and I speak to him in English. Now at home we do both speak a mix of Swahili and English together, that's fine, but the focus is the one-on-one -on -one input. So he'll know to communicate with me in English and to communicate with Rain Swahili. Not only will this help him differentiate the languages, it'll also mean that he has a really good understanding and speech in Swahili too. Because Amaya understands a lot of what we speak in Swahili, but doesn't choose to actively speak it. So we're hoping that this one parent, one language method and hearing Swahili more will also help Amaya's speech in Swahili. I feel like it's already starting to because yeah, she already had an interest in it, but now that I'm speaking more to Remy in it or even singing, and now she's yeah, getting more involved in saying, oh, you know, that's what that is, or what, what, what does that mean? So it's like, it's nice to hear that she's actually asking the questions now, as opposed to, yeah, you speaking to her and her knowing what you mean, but that, yeah, that being it. So the Opal method is backed by loads of evidence and it does work. And then eventually down the line, we will start to introduce more languages. So when Amaya turns three, I'm going to start teaching her Spanish. And hopefully when this little man turns three too, we'll be doing the same thing. And then I'm sure he'll pick up bits of lots of other languages along the way. We'll see if Kimura can get thrown in there. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm.